Lucis Trust, a non-profit, non-political, and non-sectarian organization on the roster of the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations and concerned with the establishment of world cooperation and goodwill, presents Inner Sight with your host, Robert Anderson. He, with Sarah and Dale McKechnie, President and Vice President of Lucis Trust, will discuss philosophical and spiritual topics essential to everyday life. Now here's your host, Robert Anderson. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Inner Sight. Inner Sight is simply seeing that which is always present, but not yet fully recognized. You have, within you, the ability to see yourself and the world around you in a new way, with new eyes. So stay with us, and together we'll look at the world and ourselves with inner sight. The topic of today's show is the first-rate power, or will. And I like this thought. There is one life which, ex which expresses itself primarily through seven basic qualities or aspects, and secondarily, through the myriad diversity of forms. These seven radiant qualities are the seven rays. And basically, we're going to be speaking about the seven rays that I just mentioned, but they're not rays the way we think of rays. They're about energies and subtleties and frequencies that have a profound effect not only on humanity, but all of life. And science is finding out that there is so much too reality, the universe, then meets the eye, or then that can be detected by the five senses. There is so much available that we're finding out that does have such an effect on mankind. And I think it's important that we sum up our last show. Can you sum up our last discussion, which introduced the seven rays? Well, I'll try. Uh, the seven rays, first of all, are the sevenfold expression of divinity. They are divine energies that condition all aspects, all manifestations of life on our planet. Uh, God is one, but his quality is sevenfold. It's said that um, the number or the vibration of evolution is seven, and we talked about how you can see that in the fact that um, there are uh, the seven notes of the uh, musical scale and the the week is based on seven days um, the the vibration of seven uh, manifests throughout nature and it affects also the the uh, manifestation of every form this is what we know as the seven rays and uh, I think the most important thing to keep in mind when examining their psychological effects is that these are div divine energies so any um, discussion of them doesn't uh, rank one ray as better than another or one ray as of a lesser quality. They are all divine in origin. Yes, and you can see them manifesting. The same, the same seven differentiations uh, are seen in the, the seven rays of the, uh, of the seven colors of the spectrum mm -hmm. of uh, sunlight. Right. A beam of light shown through a prism differentiates into seven basic paths of different colors and vibrations. Mm -hmm. Literally seven rays. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, these are the, essentially the same kind of ray. They, they have different colorations and they have different vibration levels, mm -hmm. but they all emanate from deity. And they are means by which deity expresses its life here on earth through humanity. And so all human beings are made up of these seven basic qualities in various combinations. And uh, I think another point to bring up, as we said uh, in the introduction to this whole subject, which is extremely complex, profound in its spiritual implications, is that if it sounds simplistic, that's our fault, not the fault of the... Um, teaching of the ageless wisdom because in fact it's an extremely complicated science 
the the teaching on the seven rays is a science and all we want to do through these discussions is just to introduce the subject to listeners who then might want to explore it a bit more on their own mm -hmm. but to really learn about the seven rays requires a great deal of study yeah each ray is um by itself <clears throat> as we said they are energies in in motion and uh it's the way that deity makes contact with the world, but each ray has a certain purity of its own, but which becomes tempered or qualified and reduced in quality when it mingles with the human substance, and its purity is then further modified and when combined with other ray qualities. So uh, we will, in f future programs, uh, we will be looking at this and how these qualities manifest in the world and through human actions. Well, today we'll continue our discussion on the seven rays, but we'll talk about the first ray of will and power. And once again, it has to do with energies that affect us. The first, way, the first ray loves isolation. I guess that's one of the characteristics of a person who's... Um, a first-rate person, we should say. Okay, yeah. that yeah, that first-rate person loves isolation. That's one of the characteristics of that uh, person who's under the influence of the first ray. Mm -hmm. And it's the line of least resistance. He's the one who normally stands alone. And this is his strength, and it's also his weakness. But And that comes from the writings of Alice Bailey. Uh, how can something be both a strength and a weakness. It relates to what Dale was saying a few moments ago about how these seven uh, expressions of divinity, they are the qualities of God in a sense, if we think of them uh, in that way. And maybe I should just take a moment to run through them again for our listeners. The first ray of power, second ray of love, the third ray of active intelligence, the fourth ray of harmony through conflict, the fifth ray of science, the sixth ray of devotion, and the seventh ray of organization. These are the sevenfold expression of divinity, but they become distorted just as the prism breaks down the rays of light into different colors and frequencies. As these rays express through form, depending on the purity or impurity of that form, the rays are degenerated, I guess you could say. And that's what makes um, a an energy, it's essentially an energy which is impersonal into either a strength or a weakness. Right, and it said in the in the quote there, um, the first ray person loves isolation. Well, uh, isolation at one point on the path uh, can be a, a kind of a weakness because mm -hmm. it could lead a person that tends to make a first ray person or a person who was very strongly oriented in, along this first ray line tends to make him isolated. He wants to do things on his own. Uh, whatever plans he has, he wants to, uh, to be his plans. And uh, if it's he's very um, um, selfish or in his own makeup or if he's self-centered, self mm -hmm. that can turn the energy inward onto the person and it could lead to crystallization after a while. But you can also see that the ability to stand on your own, to be independent, to be um, responsible for your yourself and for your spiritual development is a great strength, to lose the dependency on others. That's right, yeah. So, I mean, that's where uh, this um, isolation can be both a, a strength and a weakness. Mm -hmm. It depends on on the person where his consciousness is focused, if it's very focused on himself, then that ray energy, that quality, is going to lead to a certain amount of crystallization. Mm -hmm. And he's going to uh, see himself as a standing apart from everybody else. That's what I find so fascinating about the study of the rays in terms of human psychology. It helps you understand that all energy can be either uh, expressed in a in a refined and spiritually positive way or it can be distorted into a uh, degradation of that energy 
uh, for example, the tendency to become static and crystallized, as Dale mentioned, is a uh, um, an attribute of the first ray that um, is more negative.